15 percent uh, emissions over the 1990 levels by 2020. The strategy said the money would be used to fund green initiatives, but businesses and environmental groups, for that matter, uh, agree that that needed to be made clear, perhaps even legislated, to ensure the cash didn't flow into general operating revenue. So the paper announced, uh, at the end of the paper, they announced that the cost of the climate change strategy was unclear. So that was October 2015. Uh, when they announced the cost um, wasn't clear at that time, is that accurate? So we, um, to propose the degree of uh, cap and trade receipts over this period of time to be reinvested as prescribed by the piece of legislation that's just been made, um, it's to be determined as we proceed as to how the market will engage in those transactions. So, But that's our uh, estimates as to what will be achieved. So when they came out at the end of October, they announced that the cost was unclear at the time. They had no financial information on the cap-and-trade program at the end of October. Is that accurate? Well, no, the, the government has, as well as many stakeholders, as well as other jurisdictions in North America, including the, in Quebec and, and California, in which we've been engaged with, have a determination as to what this would be, and that is how we've been assessing our, our, our uh, proposal. So when the minister announced that they were unclear with any financial information, he was being inaccurate? I think, yeah, I mean, you'll have to ask the minister specifically what he was uh, getting at. I mean, what we've achieved and what we've assessed is the benefits of uh, uh, this process for a new carbon economy, low carbon economy, the impact it would have in our relations with taking a leadership role would have positive economic, co you know, effects. Uh, we estimate and we've budgeted that it would be around $1.8 to $1.9 billion in additional revenues, and we've actually taken and prescribed all of those revenues for uh, the, the, the reinvestment into lowering emissions as is prescribed uh, and as is required in, in the funds that we put forward. And we took an advance of $325 million with the Green Energy, with the Green Fund to, to enable some of those companies to facilitate in that transition period. We already saw that the government is taking money from the sale of Hydro One and using it to balance the budget. We talked about that extensively last week, and of course that was outlined and revealed, uh, first of all in the 2015 fall economic statement, and then in the 2016 budget. Um, we know that because money from the asset sale was listed in revenue, and the amount of infrastructure announced back in 2014 uh, remained unchanged, ostensibly unchanged. It seems you're at it again with the cap and trade file. Um, can you, I'll ask you the same question that I asked you about hydro last week. Can you guarantee that not a single dollar from the cap and trade will go to pay for already budgeted projects outside of the green investment fund? Um. So two things. We are not relying on the repurposing of assets to balance the books. Uh, our total budget will be close to $140 billion on an ongoing basis. The ability to come to balance is as a result of many factors that we have going forward. Uh, the transformation of those assets is to reinvest in new infrastructure projects. We made that clear as well as to pay off debt to the tune of $5 billion uh, to those specific uh, associated assets and their liabilities. In respect to cap and trade, uh, it is also very clear that the uh, uh, proceeds must be used to the prescribed areas to further reduce carbon emissions. And it's proven to be uh, appropriate in other jurisdictions, and it is something that uh, is recognized as being effective. Uh, we recognize that other jurisdictions have used uh, carbon pricing. They've offset some of those pricings with film tax credits and other grants. Well, we need to ensure that these funds go to reduce carbon emissions, 
promote the new carbon, low carbon economy, and protect a, a, a more effective environment. And that's very clear in terms of how it's laid out. Well, that, that's a wonderful statement uh, and very aspirational, uh, Minister, but not very operational considering your own fall economic statement, your own budget, and quite frankly, last week in committee, the financial accountability officer would question that. And that doesn't seem to be uh, what all of the evidence will bear. Uh, when you look at page 106 of the fall economic statement, um, it talks about, well, in fact, it reveals uh, that the proceeds from the cap and trade system go directly into general revenue. In fact, uh, for 2016, at the time of the fall economic statement, it was 300 million in 2016 and 1.3 billion in 2017-18. So a total of at that time, which which grew in the budget, but at that time, uh, you have 1.6 billion dollars uh, of changes, revenue changes in the 2015 budget, and it's called preliminary projected cap and trade proceeds. So you've got 1.6 billion dollars that you're now putting into revenue. And as we go back to page 99, uh, those indeed, those new revenue numbers, which include cap and trade as part of the revenue, are now listed here uh, under revenue, which uh, when you take the expenses of the, uh, that you've all, uh, forecast as well, is how you come to balance for 2017-18 much like you did with the Hydro One uh, revenue, you put it into general revenue where you have the $130 billion of infrastructure already budgeted for, already accounted for. So ostensibly you put this money against the transit and infrastructure, but take the transit and infrastructure money that was already budgeted out and use that to balance. So I'll ask you again a relatively simple question. Will any of the cap and trade dollars uh, go towards any projects that you have already announced? Yeah, your assertions are incorrect. The actual uh, display of revenues that were estimated in the uh, fall economic statement and the results that have occurred in the budget of 2016 lays out the fact that we advanced $325 million towards expenses, actually lowering our overall revenues uh, the opposite way, uh, as opposed to what you're suggesting. Well, 325 funds million being, is a long ways away from no, 1.6 no, billion. Those funds have not been realized. What has been realized is that we've expensed $325 million against cap and trade without any proceeds being attributed to the budget, and we still beat our targets substantively. And why? Because we've restructured and we've found savings, we've improved revenues through economic uh, growth because of the stimulus that we've put in place, and we've controlled our expenses effectively without having any receipts from assets and or cap and trade. We're well, still beating our targets. Well, and going forward, all those proceeds are dedicated, prescribed to be reinvested in new projects to lower overall emissions. Well, that's quite different, uh, Minister. Again, very aspirational to hear, but sadly not operational. What you're suggesting uh, is quite different than what was actually in your budget with respect to where your revenues were and how you achieved those revenues. Uh, certainly, we know that there were plenty of one-time revenues put into your budget, including the hot Toronto real estate market. So we understand that. And we understand you have talking points to stick to. Sadly, they don't line up with the reality of what the financial accountability officer tells us on a week-by-week, month-by-month basis. And uh, certainly we have appreciated his analysis of where the uh, Hydro One money was going to. You remember I read that into the record uh, actually several times last week where he talked about the fact that um, the initial 15% sale of Hydro One would significantly reduce the province's deficit in 2015-16, which it did. 
In the years following the sale of 60% of Hydro One, the province's budget balance would be worse than it would have been without the sale. And last week in uh, the Bill 172 committee, the financial accountability officer took it upon himself to show up and make a deputation at the committee to basically tell us the facts, because we're certainly not getting them in the legislature. So as we leave the fall economic statement and see the budget four months later, the budget showed an even greater take for the government. The, the cap and trade is expected to now bring in $1.9 billion in 2017-18, 600 million more than forecast. So the bottom line is that the government is playing precisely the same shell game with cap and trade revenues as they did with the revenue from the sale of Hydro One. They are using it to pay for already budgeted items and using those previously earmarked funds to lower the deficit. So I want to ask you again, will a single dollar from the cap and trade go towards the Hamilton or Kitchener or Ottawa LRTs or the GO train upgrades, any of the previously announced programs? Your assertions are incorrect. Um, I'll share that with the financial accountability office. The assertions that you make, I'm sorry, are incorrect. Uh, we recognize and appreciate the work that the financial accountability officer is, is doing, recognizing the sensitivities with respect to economic growth and recognizing the impacts of some of our proposals going forward. And as we take that under advisement, we also recognize, as does he, that we've overachieved on those very matters. In respect to your assertions, though, you have stated something that hasn't happened, that is not happening. Uh, we are not relying on um, our, our, our assets that we are repurposing. We are relying on them to reinvest them into new assets. Your, uh, the proceeds from the cap and trade are fully designed and prescribed to be put for new investments mm -hmm. to reduce overall emissions. Well, Chair, and we've advanced that by $325 million uh, in this budget already. Chair, let's talk about that then because, you know, I remember when the Hydro One uh, shell game was played. I, I remember bringing Bill 144 to the legislature. You direct your questions to the minister. Oh, this is not like our... Uh, no, this is not, not like in the, the in the chamber. Um, the Bill 144 had a really interesting little roundabout way to get money already uh, spent and or allocated um, out of the Hydro One and into reimbursing the government. That was the one line that I presented many times last week that the government was able to be reimbursed for monies already spent. So you did the same thing here. If you allow me on the, the budget bill, uh, or I'm sorry, the uh, cap and trade bill 172, down around the bottom of page 47, uh, it runs the same playbook here. It says... Uh, under item 68, and you'll have to remember item 68 because the financial accountability officer is going to spend a tremendous amount of time talking about that. Under authorized expenditures, uh, under schedule 68, paragraph 2 states amounts not exceeding the balance, etc., etc., uh, can be paid out of the consolidated revenue fund for the following purposes to fund directly or indirectly costs relating to initiatives described in Schedule 1. So that's what you can use the cap and trade money. So a couple of pages later, a couple of pages later, we'll go to Schedule 1, and now we understand that you can use the money for initiatives relating to the reduction of greenhouse gas from transportation, including public transit vehicles and infrastructure. So now we know that you can use the money from uh, the cap and trade, an authorized expenditure is public transit and infrastructure. And then you go to paragraph three, and it says 
that you can reimburse the Crown for expenditures incurred by the Crown for any of those uh, items that were described. So it's the same shell game. You, you, can, you, you accept the money, you put it in the bank, you can transfer it to pay for uh, transit or infrastructure, but that one little sentence is the same sentence you used to facilitate the Hydro One. It is to reimburse the Crown for expenditures already incurred by the Crown. How, how do you justify that sentence, if not, indeed, to use the money precisely as I've outlined, that you've done it again, you build one of the $130 billion previously announced transit projects and then use the cap and trade money to reimburse the government for funds that were already budgeted for that project. Uh, so, Madam Chair, I, I think the member fails to recognize that while we're doing um, uh, these initiatives, we've stated very clearly that they are to be used to reinvest in infrastructure project with respect to the repurposing of assets. We've increased incrementally accordingly those investments. And when it comes to cap and trade, the member just cited the fact that projects that are used, that are being proposed to reduce overall emissions, to invest in those initiatives that create a greater benefit for our environment, that's what these proceeds would be used for. Some of them will be housing, some of them will be transportation, some of them will be ref refit. So there's a number of initiatives that are required. And again, the member just noted, we've increased incrementally our overall investment in infrastructure to $160 billion now over 12 years. Year over year, those changes have, have accordingly gone up. I, I'm not sure. Deputy, do you want to add something? Well, I, I, this has come up a couple of times now, and I'm, I'm hoping I can add some clarity to the fact that it, it's, it's simply the way that the government uh, expenses and accounting works. We're talking about two different cases where we're dedicating funds, and when you dedicate funds and you, uh, you, you, know, you allocate them for a certain purpose, you, you mentioned different ministries, different types of projects. They're going to be undertaking that work. They're going to be spending that money. Those ministries then need to be reimbursed from the dedicated funds, and that's what this allows to happen. Well, that's not quite as the Financial Accountability Officer sees it, and we'll talk about that if I have the, another 20 minutes today. A little later, we'll get to that. So you are sitting here trying to tell this committee that you will not spend any of the cap-and-trade money on projects, whether it's transit vehicles, which are allowed, infrastructure which was allowed that was already budgeted for or already announced. This is what your your deputation here is today. The requirement to use those funds will be fully prescribed as is being now debated before committee for the purposes of reducing emissions. Well, going well of course forward. it'll be it'll be done like that. You're you're passing a bill that allows you to pay yourself back. Of course you'll be uh, you'll you'll be uh, uh, respecting all of the laws, you make them. You make them as you go along, as a matter of fact. We saw it with Hydro One, where the money uh, by law was not able to be used. Mr. Padel, you have just under a Thank minute. Thank you. Oh, I have under a minute? Where under Hydro One, where the law stated you could not use the funds to, uh, for any other purpose than uh, paying the uh, mortgage, if you will, on Hydro, you changed the law. That's, you snapped your fingers, used your majority, you changed the law, and that money can be taken out of Hydro One and put for other use. Uh, we saw you do that, and that was awful, by the way, to see that, 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 that your majority was used to do that. And then you stifle the financial account accountability officer, the auditor general, and all eight officers of the, of the legislature from seeing any of the inside track on how you're doing these things. You did that at Hydro One, and now, according to the financial accountability officer, again, who I said was here last week uh, at uh, Bill 172 committee, it basically is saying the same thing. You're stifling him from I'm getting afraid. his hand on information. You are out of time now, Mr. Fideli. We Thank now you. move to the third party. 20 minutes uh, for...